heard your cry, Skugan Nation. But too much of a good thing is bad for your health. So we're only doing this once a week. Buckle up, baby. It's time for ETN. Brought to you by Lloyd's Construction and Consulting. Providing first-class construction services on 1010XL. I think we should, uh, too much of a good thing is bad for your health. I think we should uh, fire up heaters during ETN. Smoke cigarettes. Once a week. Are you saying you consider those good things? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, we won't do it all the time, but during ETN, Jeff and I will fire up heaters and blow smoke at each other. I think I'll have a Paul Mall. Remember that one? Paul Mall. Man, those are hardcore, buddy. Those are hard. No no filters even on those bad boys. Yeah. Uh, Mike Mike. is our guest, Guggen Judge. He's probably smoking a cigar right now as we speak. What up, Mike? Mike. Good morning. Oh, I'm doing fine, guys. How you doing? Doing very good. Well, very good, well. friend. Thanks for being a part of the program. Right. Uh, Beef, what will Mike be taking home Mike, for his expert guidance through this segment? For his efforts today, going to take home a selection of goodies from the 1010XL Valentine's Day gift guide. Mike will get a $25 gift card to Edwin Watts Golf, $25 to Woody's Barbecue, and a $50 chocolate gift basket from Peter Brook Chocolatier. Well, that's a what a consolation prize because Mike. Uh, no matter what you think of who wins today, you're dealing with two very sore losers. So with that, we'll get started. <laughs> so yeah. prepare to be bludgeoned <laughs> with insults in about ten minutes. Round one. Uh, <laughs> round one. Whether dubious or not, there was a lot of uh, chatter in the Twitter sphere yesterday over a, a tweet suggesting that the Bears could be interested in a deal for uh, Gardner Minshew. It was uh, slightly more legitified later in the day by uh, Ben Albright, who said that. You know, uh, Carson Wentz wasn't the only QB with Nick or uh, John DeFilippo ties that the Bears were interested in. If you were the Jags, I mean, what would you trade Gardner Minshew for what you think his value would be? If I were the Jags, would yeah. I trade Gardner Minshew for what his value would be? Right, because um, you figured it would be like a day three pick, right? Yeah. Uh, Compared to a $900,000 backup QB with the I mean, I. If I go sign somebody, I'm going to have to pay him a lot more money than Gardner Minshew. I got Gardner Minshew under contract. Uh, I think I'm going to have to do a little bit better than what I think his value is going to be if I'm going to trade Gardner Minshew. In other words, I have to win out because I know what I have in Gardner Minshew. And I thought, I've always said this about Gardner Minshew. I think Gardner Minshew can ham and egg it to a victory. Of course. Well, if Gardner Minshew can ham and egg it to a victory and I got a backup quarterback at a, at a great deal, why am I going to trade that away? That's a luxury in this day and age. So it would have to be better than – what I think his value would I be guess for me the, to make the deal. The reason you would take the deal would be because you've only got him for two more years. As cheap as he is, uh, look, the Jags are going to ride or die with Trevor Lawrence at this point. But to your point and to the question, the answer to the question is is no. I'm not going to trade him for his perceived value. It's going to take a second or third round pick. Maybe the Bears are that dumb. I wouldn't put it past them, but I, I think this is more – gossipy, rumory, innuendo than it is factual in its base. Yeah, I'm going to go with Jeff on this one. Where's Jeff? Round two. Uh, round two, obviously we know uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence will be the first pick here in the NFL draft, although it seems like uh, you guys talked about the draft Bible with uh, five QBs checking out with first-round grades. Uh, agree or disagree that we'll have five quarterbacks see their name called in the first round on April 29th. No, I agree, 100%. Maybe six. I'm not going to count those guys that are just outside of that first round as not getting in. And here's why. We have a very unique situation this year that we have good teams that have quarterback need. And when I say good, I mean brand-name teams that are picking from 15 to 32, which is where you can certainly afford, if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers or the New Orleans Saints or even the New England Patriots, you can afford to use one of those picks on a quarterback there. So that puts those fringier prospects, according to some analyses, guys like Mac Jones, I I think it guarantees that they fall in that first round. Well, a guarantee you won't see six. Five you probably see, but I will make this also pledge to you and that – one of those five, and it would probably be Trey Lance or Mac Jones, will do a, a tumultuous free fall. In other words, where some might be thinking, well, we think uh, so-and-so likes him at eight, Carolina. We think, you know, New England, he won't get past 15. I predict one of them will and will fall down into the, uh, into the 20s where some uh, team will snatch him up. Yeah, I agree with Dan. Um, I think one will just fall. So, Pinner Dan. Round three. Yeah! Uh, round three, Dan. So, so obnoxious. Your uh, favorite 
your favorite in-season feature yes, uh, made its uh, way to early debut yesterday on uh, ESPN.com. The power rankings, you referenced it. Yes. Uh, Jags Getting kind of heck. Climbing the ladder at 31 now. Yes. Ahead of uh, climbing a, the ladder. A familiar foe, though. Yeah. At 32, the Houston Texans, I would assume, speculated that Deshaun Watson's on his way out. Right. Uh, without Deshaun Watson, are the Houston Texans the worst team in the NFL? Yes. It's not just Deshaun Watson either. There's going to be massive changes uh, with the Houston Texans. J.J. Watt is not going to be back with the Houston Texans either. They don't have, listen, Deshaun Watson kept them somewhat as, as, quote, competitive as they could be. And when I say that, keep in mind that they barely beat the Jags twice. So uh, you lose Deshaun Watson and you plummet down to the very bottom. Houston uh, has been butchered. Uh, They have a terrible offensive line despite trading for Laramie Tunsil. Uh, what running back do they have? They don't have D-Hop anymore. What skill players do they have? Their defense is not very good anymore. They've got the kid from Vandy Cunningham, and that's about it. Uh, yeah, Houston minus Deshaun Watson, 100% the worst team in the NFL. Power rankings in the middle of this season are nonsensical. That's what we have standings for. Power rankings today on February 9th make nonsense look sane. And this is a perfect example of why. So we're going to do a power ranking. Let me get this straight. We're going to put Houston 32nd overall because we suppose that they won't have Deshaun Watson. And we're going to put the Jags 31, apparently unaware that they're going to get Trevor Lawrence. So I don't give a damn if Houston's last. Maybe they are. But I know the Jags aren't 31st. And to completely ignore this, uh, the reasons for this offseason optimism make the power rankings even more of a blight than I'd normally consider them. I agree with Jeff. Power rankings this time of the year are a waste of time. Son of a B. Round four. That one stung. <laughs> Round four. Keeping it going. Uh, dig you know out what I brought this. today? You know what I bought I'm today, Hick? Dig. What? We talked about this on the show the other day, and then I kind of Almost. forgot about it. I, no, I don't have one of those. We'll do that in the break. Uh, no, one of those watermelon Mountain Dews. I'm looking forward to trying that oh, later this morning. Wonderful. Remember we talked about that that day? Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, like you wouldn't watermelon, like it. so yeah. I wouldn't yeah. drink it. I love watermelon, but watermelon soda does not sound mm, It's great. odd. It's interesting. Fizzy. Yeah. Although if somebody told me, hey. The Googans were, were raving about it, though, so we'll see. Yeah. If somebody told me, hey, would you like a grapefruit soda? I'd be like, no, that sounds gross. But, man, I love squirt. So, oh, who yeah. knows? Mm. It may be good. Uh, round four. Uh, we're about a month away from uh, from this event that seems to be on track for getting pushed through and occurring. Yes, but uh, you know, what about this team group of names? Uh, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, Giannis. Sounds like an All Star team. Instead, it's a team of All Stars. Well, I think the All Star game is a really dumb idea. So even though the league's trying to push this thing through, uh, do you think ultimately it's going to die on the vine with this much pushback from the players? Uh, no, because the Players Association, which includes all of them, not just those big names, I promise you, there's John Collins is sitting in Atlanta saying, well, you don't want to go, I'll go. The problem, though, that you did here, and the reason I would side with LeBron here, and is what he said last week, these guys told us we weren't having an All-Star game. We pushed the season back, we started earlier than we wanted to, and they told us we weren't going to have one. It's not like... We've known all along, and now we're you know we're complaining about it. But as part of the agreement to restart when they did, they were told that there would not be a, an All Star game. So I get that part of it um, as well. Yeah, I, I have a hard time uh, siding with them when their guys said, "Let's do it." You know, again, it's, <laughs> it's. I mean, here's the deal, man. The Players Association, okay, of which they are all members and stand by. Said, let's do it. Signed off on the All-Star game. So now all of a sudden, you know, do they not talk? Is there no communication? Uh, do you not talk to your to your most influential members and say, hey, listen, we're going to okay this All-Star game just so you know. Uh, it makes no sense what's going on here and shows a real lack of communication amongst the group. I, I, it's concerning to me, but no, they're playing it, yeah. Winner Dan. Welcome to round five and prepare to die. Oh, dear. Uh, lastly, round five yesterday, uh, Major League Baseball inching wow. closer to getting going. Uh, some rules agreed upon yesterday. The uh, seven-inning doubleheader sticks around. The man on second and extra innings sticks around. The DH does it. What the hell? What are we doing? Me? Yeah, it's you. Uh, Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah. Violation. I agree. I don't understand it. I mean, you can sit here and make me, you know, they they dare 
to say it was safety and protocol. What? What are you talking about? There is no, the only, understand this, I will say this again. The only more contentious yin and yang in the United States of America than Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association are Republicans and Democrats. I mean, to not have a DH makes no sense on either side. And for, personally, I'm, I'm ticked about it because it takes a bat out of the uh, Mets lineup. And there will be a DH. Ne- the, the stupidity of it is, come next year, when they sit down and finally, after they strike and disagree and lock out, there will be DH in both leagues. So, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you on this one. You guys can make sense of this, Mike. I'm going to fire up a Marlboro. A Paul Mall. I would prefer you go Paul Mall. <laughs> that Marlboro yeah. red, Dan? Yes. Yeah. At least it's a red. No, <clears throat> not, not, not some green. It gives green me or the Listen, no, I, I you're, you're, you're grinding your gears way too much on this. I, I'm not smart enough to know every little uh, intricacy that they're differing over. I would say, hold on now. It's been one year with a DH and a thousand years without one. There is that tradition. But I would defer to Daniel Murphy told us why. It doesn't matter what you or I think. He is a former player, and he told us why they don't want a DH in the National League, and it's to preserve jobs. So, look, you're the players right now, and you feel like you're getting it taken away from you at every angle through the pandemic and otherwise, and this is just one spot where they're not ready to give that back yet. I'll tell you what, on this one, I wish we could have a tie because I understand both parts, but um. But I'm gonna have to go with Dan on this. Yeah! Oh, damn it, That's Mike. That's what I'm talking about, Mike. Woo! Wow. Fireball and a Marlboro Fireball Red. Fireball Tuesday. Oh, what Fireball a day. Fireball Tuesday. Mike, look what you've done. Yeah! See what you've done, Mike. Do I act like this when yes, I win? Yes, sir. I show class. I show humility. Let's drink. We have to listen to this guy Let me scream you one, and Jeffrey. yell. There like you he, go. And by the way, you, Beef, you, you, you got totally one? screwed Always. me. Don't like the second answer. Woo! His was it terrible. Double. Here we and go. And it was the same. Three fingers. Ah. Three fingers? I don't fingers. understand, Mike. You got it. Why do you let Shut him out of the hole? Oh. I mean, it's like 12 to 4 <laughs> in the CTN, and you give him life. <laughs> yeah! Can I hang up on Mike? Thank you, Mikey. Thought I liked him. Love you, Mike. Made a mistake. Woo! Big mistake. Hey!